Hello everybody, welcome back to Sunday Berries. Today I am excited because I am going to swatch Daniel Smith, Jean Haynes, All That Shimmer set, which was a gift from my sister. I am going to be using my watercolor sketchbook and I will also try these colors in the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black. I have never tried this type of paper. I am not sure if I like the texture, but we are going to try it anyway. I will start by doing it in the white paper and then on the black paper. However, I believe that these are meant to be used on black, but I still want to see what they look on regular paper. Also, I believe that these colors can be used with regular watercolors and be mixed with them. And I'm really interested in seeing what happens with that, although I'm not going to try it on this video. So without much further ado, let's start the swatch. Iridescent Ruby. And I am definitely not going for any type of perfect circle. We're just going to go and see what happens. All these colors are granulating colors and they are all mica, PW6 and PW20. And some of them have iron oxide. So far, this color is quite gorgeous. And of course, I will do a diluted version so we can see how that looks. And because I know they are granulating colors, I saw it on the website when I was researching the colors. I am adding a lot more water to the diluted version. At the same time, I'm going to swatch them on black paper. So far, I am not impressed how this looks on black, or at least on this paper. The next one is Iridescent Aztec Gold. Quite gorgeous as well. You can get quite the dark tone. And for diluted version. Very delicate as well. Very nice. Now we're moving to pearlescent white. I truly hope you can see this one because obviously it's a pearl color. It does look more like a 
silver, whitish silver, but it's more pearl than anything else. You can see the mica floating around and moving in the water. The next one is iridescent electric blue. Very vibrant. And diluted version. This one is iridescent topaz. Oh my God, this color. diluted version. Well, this one is quite delicate. Loving this one. Oh my God. And the last one is iridescent copper. And diluted version. Where should I put it? Right here. I think I would like to see these colors with more water. So let's go ahead and do somewhat of a circle. And we have the ruby now. Oh my God. Oh my God, take a look at that. Whoops, and there we go. They decided to mingle. <laughs> and this is the pearlescent white. Very slow moving in water. But then again, it's white. Probably you won't even see it. <laughs> Ooh, 
iridescent electric blue also quite slow moving and the beautiful iridescent topaz quite gorgeous oh my god it's gorgeous and last but not least iridescent copper quite fast moving around in water really So I was really tempted to mix the ruby and the electric blue. So here we go. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this turned out to be a nice combo. Mm, not too bad. interesting oh my god anyway let's try mixing the topaz and the ruby as well and here we go Ooh. this one is also quite nice So now I'm going to allow this to dry and we'll come back and talk about these colors because to be quite honest, I am very impressed. And we're back, as you can see, I've done a little doodle just to try out the colors and mixing some of them because I was impressed with this one. Um, but just ignore the doodle at this time. I want to tell you that I am very impressed with these colors. I love the iridescent ruby. I love the Aztec gold, I love the copper, and most of all, topaz. I think topaz and ruby are definitely my favorites. I do think that the combination of the electric blue and ruby is quite interesting, and we can see it right here as well. And the reason why I like it is because it, they, they remind me of one of the Schmincke colors, however, I must say that the electric blue for me, it's not my favorite and I really don't like it. The granulation is quite soft and subtle and I think that's throwing me off. However, I think the combination of this type of blue with the iridescent ruby is quite effective. As you can see here, I did the wet on wet you can see the beautiful granulation that these colors have. Again, I'm completely blown away by the topaz and the ruby and the copper. And that is a lightning strike. Sorry about that. It's storming outside completely. And it is 4th of July, so I'm trying to get this done before the fireworks. Anyway, uh, I don't remember the mix. I have to look back into the video and then write it down, but I will place it on the screen. But this mix came out really nice. That worked out really well. I like the toned down color of this one in comparison to, for example, the Aztec gold and the copper. So this is a really good color. I would have to mix them all to really see what they can offer. 
but I'm really more interested in seeing these colors mixed with normal watercolors because I think they will work really nice together. In terms of the shimmering, I'm quite pleased with them because they are not really very shimmering or metallic inclining. However, if we look at them in black, they completely change. It's like night and day. Here they seem metallic. I also swatched them in a little piece of black cotton paper that Daniel Smith included with the set. And here you can see the colors quite well and you can see how metallic looking they look. However, this Stonehenge paper is quite bad, really. I am so disappointed with it because this Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, I was going to do the painting here. This one, I was going to do it here. And I just placed my tape on there and it took away all the paper it's quite weak and it feels more like like uh, construction paper this is what it feels like it's like working on construction paper and i just didn't like it so i'm not recommending this brand at least for the black paper and this is legion stonehenge aqua cold press in black and definitely you can even see the difference from the black here and the black here and this is just where the tape laid for a few seconds i didn't even start because i just changed my mind to work on the white paper instead and i just took it out and it was completely ruined and you can see how much paper it got and this is a very delicate tape so this is not going to ruin your paper however this also is like it doesn't feel like a solid paper in fact let me just show you i have to do this because really it's incredible so you place it down you pick it up and there you have it like not even a second passes by and this is what you get so it is quite a bad uh, bad paper and also you can see the difference from this black to this black really bad paper never again so if you want black paper i think either you use this one and you know exactly what you're getting into or you place a black ground or watercolor on white paper and I think this is the best choice because as you can see, it even holds better the watercolor than this does. The one thing that I will say is that so far, I really love these colors painted on white rather than over black. I think they will be quite interesting to be used with your paintings and embellishing your watercolor work. But uh, other than that, they work perfectly great on white paper and loving the granulation another point to the white paper is that you can hardly see the granulation on black so yeah these are quite amazing i'm really really happy that my sister got this for me the shimmer i'm not sure if you can see that I will bring it closer to you, but the shimmer is quite subtle on white paper and on black, as you can see again, it's just like a metallic color.
they are quite beautiful and breathtaking they are stunning so with that said my friends thank you for watching if you enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button and i will really appreciate that and with that said my friends please take care of yourselves please stay safe be kind to one another and i will see you on the next video until then bye <laughs> yes and so let's finish up with the review